Hello, 3D printing friends. It's time once again for another Mod Mondays on the BB3D channel. Are you ready to hear about today's mod? Well, brace yourselves. I'll tell you about it as soon as we get back. I'm Brian, and you are watching BB3D. Hey, welcome back. Now, I know I said to brace yourself, but what we're really doing is bracing the Z axis on the Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. So why would you want to add bracing to the Z-axis on the printer? Well, the Z-axis frame is mounted to the main body of the printer by just four screws, two on either side. And even if you've got them cranked down really tight, the Z-axis can still flex some front to back. This isn't too much of a problem for prints that aren't very tall, but that kind of flex can start to cause inconsistency in layers as you print taller and taller things. But using a Z-axis bracing system will allow you to not only stabilize the Z-axis, but you can also ensure that you get it square to the Y-axis. Once you've got it adjusted, it should stay put. You'd be surprised at how much more rigid the printer feels after you've installed this mod. Now, this mod uses several printed parts. It uses nuts, bolts, and threaded rod available from a hardware store, and a handful of M3 and M5 hex cap screws that you can pick up from Amazon for a few bucks if you don't already have them laying around. This mod was designed by Shadow Weaver 2067 on Thingiverse, and it's Thing number 2414553. There are links in the description to the design on Thingiverse, as well as a link into Amazon for the M3 and M5 screws. We'll go over the printed parts first, and then we'll take a look at the hardware that you need to complete this mod. You're going to need the following printed parts. The left and right front corners. The left and right rear corners the left and right top mounts, the left and right top mount covers, four ball nut covers, and four leveler feet. So that's it for the printed parts. You'll need the following hex cap screws. Quantity 14 M3 by 10 hex cap screws and quantity 5 M5 by 10 hex cap screws. You can get an assortment of hex cap screws from Amazon, such as this W-Line assortment with 275 screws in different sizes. It's got more than enough of the M3x10 and M5x10 hex cap screws needed for the project, plus you'll have plenty of other sizes for future projects. It's under 14 bucks. Now, on to the hardware store stuff. You can pick this stuff up pretty cheaply at your local hardware store, or you can probably get it from Amazon, but here's what you need hardware-wise. Quantity 4, 1 quarter 20 by 3 quarter bolts for the leveling feet. Quantity 4, 1 quarter 20 nuts for the leveling feet. Quantity 2, 5 sixteenths nylock nuts. These are the ones with a nylon insert that keeps them in place. It's like having built-in Loctite. Quantity 6, 5 sixteenths nuts, and quantity 2, 5 sixteenths threaded rods, about 410 millimeters long. I chose to get this as a single threaded rod, a little over twice the length, and cut it down to size. So that's it for the parts. Now, I had installed this mod on my printer a long time ago, and when I started the Mod Monday series, I took all the mods off my printer to get it back to stock. Then I started doing videos for all the upgrades that I had installed, and I've come up with a few others along the way. Now, the reason I bring that up is that the parts for the mod are already printed, so I don't have any time lapses of them. And I've already got a lot of the nuts and bolts installed. When I printed these, I used supports on most of them because many of them have through holes for nuts or bolts. And due to the way the parts needed to be oriented on the bed, the big part of the hole was on the bottom and the small part was on the top. The printer can bridge the gaps easily, but it's going to want to print the perimeter of the smaller hole first and without supports, that would be floating in midair. And since it can't really float in midair, we need supports. So use your judgment on which parts need supports. Some of them definitely need them, other parts may not. If you have questions about using supports on a specific part, ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Okay, now at this point we've got all our hardware and all our parts printed out, so let's start putting things together. Let's start by preparing the four ball nut covers. And we'll do that by simply gluing in four of the 5 16 nuts. Test the fit first. If they're a tight fit, you can use CA glue to secure them, but if the fit's a little bit looser, you probably want to use something like E6000. I like the E6000 because it has a pretty strong hold, but you need to give it several hours to cure. But once you've got that stuff glued in, set them aside, curve side down, hardware side up, and let them cure. And while those are curing, we can work on some other parts. With the nuts secured in the ball nut covers, let's glue the 1 quarter 20 by 3 quarter inch bolts into the leveling feet. 
I'll show you the finished product here. When I made mine, I also designed a thin disc in Tinkercad to function as a foot pad. I printed them in a somewhat firm TPU filament and simply glued them on, but it's probably easier to use peel and stick rubber feet or felt pads instead if you want to have a no scratch leveling foot. So add whatever you want to use for a foot pad and then set those aside and we'll continue on. The four one quarter 20 nuts for the leveling feet get installed in the four corner pieces for the printer. Just glue those in place like you did for the ball nut covers. Now we're going to get the threaded rods ready. On one end of a threaded rod, we're going to use two of the regular non-locking nuts. And we're just going to put them on there and then we're going to tighten them against each other. That gives a wrench something to hold on to when we try tightening the nylock nut. So you can use a wrench on this bottom nut here and then you can tighten the nylock nut down on this side. And you want to get it down about three quarters of an inch. Once you've got that done, you can remove the nuts from this end and then your threaded rods have the nylock nuts right where they need to be. It's time to install the threaded rod into the rear corner pieces. Insert the rod from the bottom and pull it into place. Use one of the nuts in the ball nut caps to pull the threaded rod fully into the corner piece. Do this for both corners. Do this for both rear corners, and when you're done, leave that ball nut cover on the end, because this is where it belongs. Go ahead and put the other ball nut cover part way down the rod as well. When you install these, make sure that the ball end of it is facing the middle part of the rod. Do this for both. Install the leveling feet in all four corners. Now we've got our parts prepared, so let's get them installed on the printer. We're going to go ahead and put the front corners on first. And to do that, we're gonna to need to get to a couple of the M3 screws that are underneath the front cover. So we're gonna turn the printer on its side and get started. So the piece that we're installing right now is the left front. And we're gonna to need to remove two screws. We need to remove this M3 screw here And we need to remove the M5 screw from the front. We're going to be replacing those screws with the slightly longer screws that we ordered. So we're going to be using an M3 by 10 here and an M5 by 10 here. Let's get the part in place. This can be a tight fit, so you may need to work at it a little bit. Repeat the same process for the other side of the front. Now we have the front leveling feet installed. It's time to work on the back. In order to get the rear corners installed, we need to make sure that we have the top of the Z-axis ready to accept that threaded rod. So we're going to install this piece. We're going to remove the M3 screws here. We're going to be replacing those with the longer M3 by 10 screws. With those screws removed, let's install the top piece here. Now we're going to do the same for the other top side. And 
And again, we replace these screws with M3 by 10s. So we're going to be removing this M5 screw here and this M3 screw here and replacing them with an M5 by 10 and an M3 by 10. And as we install this part, the threaded rod is going to go up through this part at the top. We will repeat the process for the other rear corner. Now at the top of each threaded rod, we will add a 5 16 nut. We're not going to screw it all the way down yet because we still need to make sure that we get the Z axis square to the Y axis. Do the same for the other side. Loosen the two screws at the bottom of the Z on each side. You can adjust squareness on the printer like so. In order to bring the Z gantry forward this way, you tighten this nut here and it pushes the gantry towards the front. If you need the gantry to move towards the back on this side, loosen this nut and tighten this one and it will begin to push the gantry back. Once you have it square, tighten the nuts on both sides evenly and then you can install the cap here. And there are two screws that go in, again, M3 by 10s. And do this for the other side of the printer as well. Now, once you have the nuts tightened up up here and you've got the Z axis square to the rest of the printer, make sure you tighten the two screws down at the base of the Z axis on both sides. And once you do, this printer is going to be rock solid. That Z axis is not going to sway back and forth any longer. Well, now that we've got that Z axis locked in and rock solid, it's probably a good idea to make sure the bed is still level. After all, we were messing with the printer's frame. But this printer is now ridiculously rigid. It would take some major catastrophe to knock that Z axis out of alignment. Well, now we're at the part of the video where I say things like like, subscribe, and share, because those three things really do help the channel. And if you know somebody that has a Monoprice Maker Select Plus, or a Wenhao Duplicator i3 Plus, or a Cocoon Create Touch, then share this video with them. And if you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, leave your thoughts down in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing, please consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. If you're so inclined, you could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Either one of those would be greatly appreciated, and there's links for those down in the description. That's about all the time we have today, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking the BB3D icon right over here. And ring that bell to be notified when I release new videos. Oh, speaking of videos, here's one YouTube thing you might enjoy. Well, now that I've got a rock-solid Z-axis, I'm going to go print something cool and tall. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.